To say that StarClan's influence on the living cats and warriors is inconsistent would be quite the understatement. At some points in time, a StarClan spirit is whisked away before they can even have a conversation with the cat they're visiting, and then at other points, they are shown to be capable of creating a storm that leads to a tree falling and crushing a very specific cat. The prophecies begin ultimately did it best. The most powerful thing StarClan could do was granting leaders nine lives. And when Firestar asked why StarClan let bad things happen, Bluestar responded, We do not interfere. If we did, would you truly be free? Firestar, you and every cat have the choice of whether or not to follow the warrior code. You are not the playthings of StarClan. One of the most poorly aged quotes in Warrior Cats. The very next start completely contradicts it with Mudclaw's character arc. Rather than having no power to control cats taking over clans, which led to Broken Star and Tiger Star getting the power they did, they very blatantly stop a specific cat from taking control of Wing Clan, effectively choosing the leader. And we never really learn, had Tallstar not swapped to One Whisker at the last minute, if Mudclaw would have actually been a bad leader or not. One Star definitely had his share of faults. So despite uncertainty, StarClan chose the leader anyway. So Wing Clan was the plaything of StarClan. StarClan also orchestrated Squirrel Flight taking care of Leaf Pool's kits, but that's a whole other video I've already done. In the Raging Storm, there was a massive storm sent to wipe out the entire clans if SkyClan was to leave, which could have been sent by a power above StarClan, and not StarClan itself, I suppose. But either way, it contradicts the free will message of Blue Star, and given they made a storm for Mudclaw, it's not a leap in logic to guess they made this one too. And on the topic of storms, we get into the main topic of this video. A new StarClan interference introduced in the newest book, Wind. Another storm strikes the clans, and this one carries a tree over to crash on the Wing Clan nursery. What's with StarClan and sending trees to kill Wing Clan cats? The reason I assume it's StarClan and not just random chance is that the storm, despite being endlessly fierce, ends very quickly after this tree falls. And the ultimate result of this storm is Kestra Flight and Hairstar trusting Frostpaw, which is exactly what StarClan would want, considering she is the rightful medicine cat working to be reinstated in RiverClan. It's all too convenient. So Frostpaw received a vision from StarClan of the tree falling before it did. She passed on the message to Kestra Flight. Kestra Flight didn't believe her, but ultimately Wing Clan took some precautions, which led to no Wing Clan lives being lost from the fallen tree. So Star Clan saved the day, technically, but still, Leaf Kid is almost injured, and Whistlepaw is injured as a result of this tree falling. And part of the reason this injury happens is because Whistlepaw is the only Wing Clan cat to fully trust Frostpaw at this point. So on one hand, this is a big character moment for Frostpaw because she is finally able to prove herself a legitimate messenger for StarClan's omens, but on the other hand, it feels very manufactured. First of all, it feels very possible StarClan created this storm themselves, given the timing, so Frostpaw's only saving WingClan from a problem designed for her to save WingClan. Second, StarClan helps WingClan in the least convenient way possible. Wing Clan has two medicine cats who could have received the message, and they never explain why not. Whistlepaw could have been saved from her injury had StarClan done that. Or better yet, StarClan could have told them, Hey, please listen to Frostpaw, we approve her as a medicine cat, and not sent a storm at all. Just say Splashtail is evil. That's literally all Kester Flight was asking for. No one needed to see Kits almost killed by divine intervention. And if they absolutely had to throw a tree on a cat, why not throw a tree at Splashtail like they did for Mudclaw? It makes no sense. Of course doing any of this means they would have to come up with a complete new story arc for Frostpaw, but at least it follows basic logic, and doesn't rely on overly convoluted misunderstandings to tell the story. Frostpaw's entire journey from a cat without a solid connection to StarClan to a proper medicine cat ends up having no impact because it was never her or her hard work that made the difference. It was StarClan's arbitrary decision. Take Shadow Sight. He was a cat with no StarClan connection, 
and he never got it despite working just as hard as Frostpaw. Frostpaw was more special, just because. Warriors not being the playthings of Star Clan is just not true. They totally are. Star Clan keeps setting up these elaborate situations for them to get their way, rather than simply giving advice or omens like they were originally supposed to. And it's getting to the point where Star Clan is just becoming way too important. Even Mothwing, the cat who's supposed to represent the fact that cats can be good and moral without Star Clan, admits in this book that River Clan needs a Star Clan approved leader. We've lost a piece of the reason her character exists. I just feel like Star Clan needs to give the living cats space to breathe. It feels like the clan cats don't have much free will anymore, with Star Clan always wanting to play Dungeon Master in every conflict they have, showing endless power to help the cats, but only selectively using it when it makes the plot interesting. And having a corrupt, inconsistent, dishonest Star Clan would be a fine conflict and actually incredibly interesting, if that was where they were going with this. But they're not. All their plot threads about questioning Stark Clan were left behind when the Broken Code ended. It seems they only existed to explain Ashfur. So now we're left with the basic believing in Stark Clan means you're good, hating Stark Clan means you're splash tail plot heading into book six. I can't help but feel a little disappointed. Alright, bye everyone.